Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Canada Water in South East London to King's Cross in North Central London. This ride takes about 35 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same journey takes around half an hour, although it does require a change of tube, so cycling is definitely competitive. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to the channel's supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, then there's a link in the description. All right, let's get going. So we're starting right outside Canada Water bus station, which is across the road from Canada Water tube station, this area is very well connected by public transport, but it's also pretty well linked into London's cycle network. We start first by heading down Albatross Way, which is a shared path with pedestrians. Although, if you look closely at the ground coming up here, you'll see a line down the middle. I think that was originally supposed to separate people cycling from people on foot, but there isn't really any signage to indicate which side people should be on, so just treat it like shared space. Don't go too quickly and give people a wide berth. Also, don't miss the exit here. We're going to turn off Albatross Way and go on to Swan Road. You might notice the little cycle symbols and the C14 on the ground. That's because for the first bit of this trip, we're going to be on Cycleway 14, which is a signposted route which runs mostly through back streets. We'll then leave it and go on a segregated lane on the main road. And then we will join it again, and then we'll leave it again and go on another segregated lane on the main road. This section of the route is generally pretty good. Despite being a backstreet route, it is more or less traffic free. And while it's maybe not as direct as you'd hope, it is quite nice to see some of these streets as I think there's some really interesting buildings on them. And to be honest, I never really come around here before and it's just nice to see. This part of town, and we're mostly in Rotherhithe now, it has a real maritime history and there's an interesting mix of older buildings and warehouses like the one on the right which looks like an old warehouse and newer buildings that were put up in the 80s when it was redeveloped. The layout of the streets around here means that there's very little through traffic on these streets and while that's great for cycling it's also great for that pub on the right, the ship, which is really pleasant to sit outside. We're now on this shared path and uh, just keep an eye on the left here for the blue sign. It's a shared space sign, but it also had a picture of a dog on it, which I think is quite unique. I've not seen one of those before. And we're now in King Stairs Gardens, which uh, has quite wide paths. There's no closing time on this park, so you can come through here whenever you need to. As far as I know, this entire route is essentially 24 hours. It doesn't go through any parks that close at dusk or anything like that. We're still on C14, and... Don't be fooled by this car pulling out just as we go past. It is actually a very, very quiet route and you're unlikely to run into any traffic. By the way, look on the right there and you'll be able to see the various towers of the City of London, including the Gherkin, the Walkie Talkie, etc. And you can even catch a glimpse of the Shard and also Tower Bridge. The view from there is actually really impressive in person. I know it doesn't look that amazing in the video. Um, so definitely have a little look if you're going past there. We're leaving the back streets now, and if you want to remember where you're supposed to turn off the C14 route, it's called Cherry Garden Street, which is a really easy name to remember, and I think quite a pleasant name too. This street, as all the others we've been on, doesn't really have any through traffic on it, and it's going to take us to Jamaica Road, which is the main road through this area. Jamaica Road has fantastic cycle tracks on it. Um, this cycleway is known as C4, or Cycleway 4, and uh, it's really, really good. Uh, it runs all the way up towards London Bridge, although we're not going to take it all the way there. We're going to take it as far as Tanner Street. Now, one day you should be able to cycle all the way from London Bridge down to Charlton on Cycleway 4. Currently, not all bits of it have been done, but as of about a month ago, a new section on Evelyn Street uh, and Creek Road running into Greenwich Town Centre has been finished. This section has been done for a while. It goes through Bermondsey and into London Bridge. So the only missing bit is on Lower Road, which is basically between those two sections I mentioned. We're now expecting construction on the Lower Road section, the missing section, to start by the end of the year and hopefully be finished in the spring of 2023. So when that's done, you'll be able to cycle on high quality protected tracks just like this 
no back streets or anything like that, all the way from London Bridge down to Greenwich. And then I can also show you an extra way to get through to an additional section that's been done on the way to Charlton. Um, so we're definitely going to have a lot of fun when that's finished. I'll definitely be doing some more routes sooner, sooner rather than later using the section that just opened. Uh, but for now, we're actually going to be leaving Cycleway 4. You could go straight on there on the right where that guy went, but we're crossing the road here and we're going to Tanner Street. For now, we're still on a protected lane, but we will be using quiet back streets in a moment. One thing I'd like to point out is that big green box ahead of us. Believe it or not, that's a delivery e-bike, um, an electric bicycle with a really large container on the back. Um, I have mixed feelings about them. I Sometimes I'm a bit like, should that really be in the cycle lane? It kind of looks like a van. But then on the other hand, i definitely rather have loads of those traveling around the street than yet more diesel vans. I definitely know which one I'd rather be close past by while riding my bicycle, for instance. So yeah, if you run a business, more of those please. Try and get your deliveries done by e-bike. Although if you can, maybe just try and use a normal e-bike. As I do regard those vast ones as taking the piss a little bit. You may notice, by the way, that we've now rejoined Cycleway 14 as promised, and there are C14 symbols on the ground. And again, this is a relatively quiet section of route, although it does run on back streets, and we don't have, for the most part, our own segregated lanes. Although there are actually sections where we do, which I'll point out as we get to them. When I've used this section of route before, I've had at least one person point out that sometimes on weekdays, it can get a little bit busier than I've shown in the videos, particularly with people parking and parking illegally around the hospital, which is in the area. This is Guy Street, and I believe Guy's Hospital is relatively close to here. I have seen people parking illegally around here, although personally, I didn't see too much traffic on the streets. But it is worth keeping that in mind that you may run into slightly more traffic than depicted in the video. Generally though, I do think that this is quite a good section of cycleway and particularly this section here that we're on Newcomen Street doesn't really have through traffic on most of it because as you can see, as we go past the pub at the end of the road, it essentially turns into a dead end for motor traffic and therefore there's no through traffic on the street. This is a lovely spot to sit out as well, by the way. These bollards are what's keeping it quiet. You may notice that there are a couple of sections of this route where you get a segregated cycle lane, just like here. Although it is only a contraflow lane, so you only get it in this direction to make this one-way street two-way for cycling, which is handy in itself. As with the section around Newcomen Street and Rotherithe, this is also a really nice place to sit. And I think one really nice thing about Cycleway 14, including this public space here, is that it really shows how the nice cycling infrastructure and a good experience for riding around on two wheels can also pair with just a nice urban environment. If you're sitting out at a cafe or a pub, the things that make it pleasant, like there not being very much traffic, are also the same things that make cycling pleasant. So the two things really go together quite nicely. Also, I'd be interested to know what people think of this, but when I'm sitting around in a cafe or a pub outside on the street, I actually quite like it when people are cycling past in and of itself. I think it's quite relaxing to sort of have people whiz by semi-silently. It's certainly pleasant in a way that you don't get with motor traffic. These streets around Great Suffolk Street, by the way, were recently traffic calmed by Southwark Council. Um, is they did a reasonable job. It's not really a full low traffic neighbourhood. There's still some through routes, but um, they mostly use one-way streets to kind of get rid of a lot of the traffic. And as a result, it's reasonably decent to cycle around here. Never really had too much of a problem. Make sure you don't miss this uh, protected lane here, by the way. It's a little bit twisty and turny around the back streets. But don't worry, because we're not really going to be on them for much longer. Cycleway 14 is coming to an end here for us. And we'll be joining the segregated lane here on Blackfriars Road. This is part of TFL's Cycleway 6. And it's fantastic. I've used this many times before. It's a, a north-south route coming up from Elephant and Castle all the way up through Farringdon and King's Cross. I think it's a really good testament to what happens when you build high-quality infrastructure because I don't think I've ever cycled down here and not seen it reasonably busy. My only criticism of it would probably be that it has a few too many traffic lights. For instance, this side road on the left is a signal control junction. Really, that whole stretch down by the south bank 
is probably soon going to end up being uh, effectively a low traffic neighborhood as part of the South Bank Spine project. There won't be very much traffic going into that side road and that will really remove the need for that signal and hopefully they can get rid of that and that will speed up journeys along here quite a bit. As if you do obey the traffic signals, you do tend to find yourself waiting at traffic lights for quite a long time. The same is also true here. I would replace this section of the cycle path with a zebra crossing so that pedestrians always have priority over that section. Um, but when there's nobody coming, as is very often the case, particularly on weekends, cycles can go as well. We're just gonna go north up here on uh, Newbridge Street and Farringdon Street for a while. Um, this is probably a good time to say that if you need to see a map of the route, you can download it in the description. There's a link and you can download a GPS, GPX file. That's a standard format and it should work on whatever app or device you choose to use. If you're enjoying the video or you think it's great and you want other people to see it, then you should hit the subscribe button on YouTube and that will make sure that new videos appear on your homepage. I think a lot of people maybe use YouTube or watch these videos and don't know what subscribing does and it's really just that. It just makes it more likely that you're not going to miss new content. And if you really like what we're doing on the channel and you want to support it, there's always the Patreon as well. Thanks very much to everybody who donates to that. I really appreciate it. And I've got to say, it's one of the reasons why I haven't missed a week with videos recently because I just imagine someone signing up on the Patreon, giving like three quid a month or something, and then the next week I just don't do a video and they're just thinking, what have I done? Why did I sign up to this? So yeah, you're keeping me on my toes. Well done, guys. I'm not saying that I'm never going to miss a week, by the way. I do have to take a holiday at some point but I like to try and keep it regular every Sunday night, put one out. As long as people keep watching them, I'll keep making them. And I'm really interested in your feedback, by the way. I'd, I'd like to know which bits of the video you like, which bits you don't like, what you'd like to see more of, what sort of routes you'd like to see more. Do you like long routes, short routes, more history, more cycling tips? Let me know in the comments below and I will definitely take it on board. Right, back to the cycling. So we're going to take a slightly different route into King's Cross than I normally take. Normally I'd keep following the C6 signs, but here what we're going to do is we're going to turn off left in a minute, down Hatton Wall and Port Pool Lane. But a quick note, if you're doing this in the opposite direction, you'd come out of Hatton Wall and you'd actually want to turn left, cross the road and go down Herbal Hill. That might seem counterintuitive as it's north, but then what you would do is you would turn right on Ray Street and join the segregated lanes on Farringdon Road and you'd be able to go southbound from there. The reason you'd have to do that is because Saffron Hill is one way, which it doesn't need to be by the way, it could easily have two-way cycling on it. I don't really see a reason for not doing that. So be careful as you cycle past these parked cars as obviously any of them could back out at any minute, but it's generally quite quiet through this estate and that's because there isn't really a through route here. At the end of the street, we're going to turn on some new cycle lanes. Well, they're about a year old now on Gray's Inn Road. These are pretty good and they were put in by Camden Council, which I think has a really good record with put it, putting segregated cycle lanes on main roads. They're probably one of the best boroughs for that, I reckon. These lanes aren't perfect though. So for instance, look here, there is a loading bay basically blocking the entrance to the cycle lane, which is a real shame. Um, it does mean that you have to swerve around quite swiftly. And also, I think the lanes are a little bit on the narrow side. So if these were ever replaced with step cycle tracks, maybe, as I know Camden has done with some of their other routes, it might be worth increasing the width of these lanes just slightly, which would make them a bit of a more comfortable ride and I think also help people overtake. Unfortunately, here the cycle level traffic lights were out of commission when I came down here. Um, but normally you'd get your own signal there to get a bit of a head start from the other traffic, which is a nice touch. As I understand it, these lanes were actually funded by something called Section 106 money. And if you don't know what that is, it's essentially a part of English planning law, which allows councils to say, if you want to build this building, this major development you're doing, you have to build some public infrastructure like a school or whatever. And in this case, their council said, put in some decent cycle lanes. And I think that was a really good choice because this is a really important cycle corridor. And it's only going to get more important when we finally get protected lanes on Old Street and Theobald's Road and Clerkenwell Road, which really will be excellent when they're done, hopefully in the next few years. We turned off here onto Harrison Street, and that was really the end of those cycle lanes. They did go for a little bit further, but we saw the bulk of them. There is a similar cycle lane going in the opposite direction, which is more or less the same, and the protection down them is quite good in both directions, I think. 
Now, I've not used this route to get into King's Cross Station in a previous video. This is the first time, I think. Normally, I go down Judd Street, which is a decent way of doing it. But here, we're going to be going down Cromer Street and Widbourne Street. And this little high street here is actually one of my favourite little streets in London. I really like it. If you're in the area, just check it out. I like how secluded it is, despite being really close to the busy Euston Road and to King's Cross this pub on the right here, McGlynn's, is really excellent as well. And after work, you'll often see people spilling out onto the pavement, chatting and having fun, which is what we like to see. You go down Argyle Street here and you can see the tower of St Pancras Station just dead ahead there. But we turn off right down St Chad Street and go through Argyle Square, which is a really beautiful looking square, even when you're nearly getting run over by a taxi. The square is public and is a really nice place to eat your lunch if you're in the area. It's also got a public basketball court, which is something I really recommend everybody goes out and tries if you've not done that before. They really are a great public community that you can either use by yourself or with friends or even with strangers as well. Now, coming up here, we're going to use a dedicated cycle crossing over Euston Road, but unfortunately, yeah, there's pretty much always a car blocking that end of it. I reckon that if TfL put enforcement cameras there, they would make a significant amount of money um, because I waited by that crossing for several changes because I wanted to show you it working properly. And every single time I waited for the lights change, there was a car stopped in the crossing. So I guess I just have to show you the unvarnished truth. But anyway, thanks very much for watching that guys. Thanks again to the Patreon subscribers. Don't forget to hit subscribe on the channel if you're not already subscribed. Give us a like as well, helps other people find it. Let me know in the comments below what you think, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.